What's up guys, Parker here. I have a really exciting video today on how to disable refresh of local data sources or data sources that aren't uh, refreshable on Power BI service. This is a really interesting topic because there are certain data sources that you can't refresh on uh, on Power BI service even with a data gateway. So I'm gonna show you how you can hard code them in your tables and disable that refresh entirely. So to paint this kind of picture, I wanna show you my data sources. Firstly, I have a web API that gets a random dog image. This is totally refreshable on Power BI service, but I also want to couple it with this Excel file. And this Excel file, as you can see here, is based on a file path on my computer. So if I right click this and say, hey, don't include this in report refresh, I don't want Power BI service to think it needs to refresh this. And I'm gonna show you on Power BI service, even though I have that setting so it's not supposed to refresh, uh, you can go to um, the refresh now button and you see it's gonna give me a message saying, hey, install a data gateway because your Excel file is looking at a file path on your computer so we can't see that so that's kind of an issue even though you say hey don't refresh it it tries to refresh it anyway so you're also going to run into a problem when you have a data source that can't be refreshed on power bi service even with a gateway but i can show you now how you can hard code that data into your table or into your data model so that you never have to experience those problems this is a really interesting solution so i'm excited to bring it to you so we can set this up in one of two ways. The easiest way is to go to the inner data button, click that, and you can actually copy and paste your data in using this inner data functionality. But the drawback is you can only enter in up to 3000 cells of data at a time. So if we try to copy this table uh, that I'm trying to paste in, it'll give me a, a message saying, hey, this is way too big. You can't load this in. Uh, so the second method is a little bit more involved, not too hard. Um, but it will allow us to hard code that data in so we won't need that gateway. Um, so we're gonna cancel out of here and go back to Power Query. So here's our Excel file. Uh, basically, we're gonna need to go through just a few steps to basically condense this down to one large text string. And the way we're gonna do that is we are going to get rid of these last two steps here. And the reason we're gonna do that is because I want my headers to be in the first row, as you can see in my data. So before the rows are, uh, before the first row is promoted to headers, I want to leave that as row number one. Next step is to uh, select all of the columns here, right click and click merge. And we're gonna merge with a separator of comma because I know I don't have any commas in my data set. So go ahead and click okay. So now we've condensed this 10 column table down into one column. Next, we are going to turn this into a list, which is going to allow us to uh, combine all of the rows into one row once we open up the advanced editor and add one more line of code. I'm going to call it combined and set it equal to text.combine our merged step. And I am going to separate uh, all the rows by an equal sign because I know it will have an equal sign in my data as well. So I'm going to return my final step called combined and click done. So this is gonna conglomerate down to uh, one big text string, it's just one large text. So once we have this huge text string, we can just come to home and add a new data source, start with a blank query, open up the advanced editor, and it's basically gonna say source equals some text string. We can just copy and paste that, or paste that directly into the quotation marks and click done. So that is going to leave us with our big text string again, but at this point, we don't have any connection to Excel or any unsupported data source. So now we just have to do the opposite of what we had done previously um, to get it in this text format. So in order to get it back in the Excel format, we just need to convert it to a table. And then next, we're gonna break out the columns and break out the rows. So I will break this out by going to transform and split column by delimiter. And we're gonna split into rows and our rows are split up based on an equal sign and then we'll click okay. So now we're split up back to the number of rows we had originally and we're gonna split up this uh, into columns as well by going to split column by delimiter and then split by comma. We'll get us back to the columns. So then the final step is really just going to home and use first row as headers. And then we are back to our Excel output. So finally, we can actually get rid of our Excel file here in general because now we don't want to have that connection to Excel anymore. We can delete this, uh, this file and we can rename our new query to Excel 
go ahead and click enter. And then we have our Excel file loaded in, but without any connection to that Excel file or that file path. And then now we can leave this uh, with include and report fresh or we don't have to, it doesn't really matter at this point uh, because once we publish it up to Power BI service, we are going to be able to uh, refresh that with no problem. So let that apply that query change and then we'll go ahead and test that refresh in Power BI Desktop and then we'll try to do it in service as well. So those uh, are loaded there, we'll click refresh. It'll chew through both the API and that new Excel query. And we get a new picture of a dog. And we will save and publish this up to Power BI Service. And it's all published. So we can test this out by going uh, to our Power BI Datasets tab and clicking the Refresh Now. And as you can see, we have no problems refreshing. The, it's spinning and there it goes. It has been refreshed properly. So again, you can do this with local files like we did in this example. You can do it with data sources that aren't supported for refresh in Power BI or Power BI service. Uh, so basically the key here is just taking any of your existing tables in Power BI desktop and hard coding them into their own queries that have no references to the data sources that you were bringing them in originally by if you know you're not gonna have to refresh that data source. So I hope you liked this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.